Back on the show is Keith Lee, who's going to be taking on Frederick Dupois, coming up here at TKO41 on December 9th. Keith, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, same old, same old. Trying to get over this little flu I got. It's fucking going everywhere around Las Vegas for some reason. Okay. Got, got, got to get lots of fluids, lots of rest and all that. Did you try that? And- you know, right now as we speak. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Well, I appreciate you doing this, even though you're a little bit under the weather. And, uh, man, uh, we got to talk about your last fight, of course. So you fought in September. Now you get this turnaround, and you're fighting on arguably the biggest TKO card of the year. How happy were you when you found out you were added to this card? Uh, honestly, I was I was hoping that I got the title shot. But, you know, it but uh, it's one of the best cars of the year, like you said. And I'm going, like usual, I'm going to go out there and put on the performance. I'm going to try to make sure that my fight is the best fight on the card. And hopefully Fred, or I don't know if you know how to pronounce the name. <laughs> I think I butchered his but, last name too on that one. But uh, but yeah, Frederick really, or whatever, however you say it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. But uh, <laughs> I hope he shows up to fight. Like I always hope all the guys do. So if he shows up, then we're going to have the best fight in the card. I'll tell you that. And we got to talk about your last fight, man. You're coming off that first round TKO victory over Eric Dangeneau at TKO 40. Um, could that performance have gone any better, man? You, you don't get paid by the hour, and you certainly went out there and got it done quite quickly. Yeah, I try to keep it that way, you know? Like, honestly, I wanted to get him out there a little earlier. I landed a big right hand, I think, like, the first couple minutes. But I noticed he was trying to bully me. Every As soon as I came forward, he was really stalking forward, didn't really care about my power, didn't care about my speed. Uh, I think it's a lot of guys noticing that I come, I'm coming up from 25 up to 35. So guys are like, oh, he's a small 25-er, and he's a little guy, and blah, blah, blah. And when he got in there with me, I think he felt the difference. But honestly, I think that was the best that could have went especially the style he was playing up to. Because like I said, he was with that big bully style trying to come forward. And my main goal was to stand on the feet with him, but he kept presenting opportunities for me to take him down. So I was like, hey, why not go to my bread and butter, you know? Right, yeah, exactly. And, and you seem really comfortable in there. I mean, this is your third fight in TKO, your third fight uh, pr- you know, period for, for professional. Um, I know you're an American coming in fighting for Canadian promotion, but does it kind of feel like home now for you at TKO? Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. Like if you saw my last fight, I... Uh, I kind of went off on the crowd a little bit. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's that's okay, man. You're getting people watching you fight, right? I had to, it's a little bit because, like, the first two fights I I fought, I fought Tony Laramie the first fight, but I couldn't really expect them to even like me a little bit because he's the home favorite. So, and then the second fight, I fought another Canadian. And this time, I was like, I need a little bit of love. Like, as soon as I won, the crowd went completely silent. Like, everybody was, like, staring at me like I was a weirdo. So, I was like, oh, I got to get a little, a little bit of love. But it started to feel like home. Slowly but surely. We probably got one or two more in Canada, and then we move on to the big show. Excellent. Well, that sounds good. Uh, and you're taking on Frederick Duprois, who I, I said is, he's got the 1-0 record. Um, how do you feel like you match up against him? Was it tough finding tape on him at all uh, for this fight? Actually, it was. I found a little bit. I found a little bit of his amateur. I guess he was a 45-er in the amateur ranks. And uh, I don't know. I didn't really see much, to be honest. I, I just saw that he's a lot slower than me. He, he has some power, though. I will give it to him. It does look like he can crack. And I have to make sure I'm on my feet, make sure I'm moving back and forth in and out the pocket with him. And other than that, it should be a good fight. I didn't really see too much that that scares me other than the fact that he has power. But everybody at 35 and 45 has power, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. How's uh, training camp going at Extreme Couture uh, ahead of this matchup? Crazy, crazy. I Honestly, it's not one of the best camps I've had because I'm fucking sick as usual. <laughs> but uh, we're getting there. As long as I show up to the gym and as long as I get rounds, like I'm getting rounds with great people like – uh, I've been using Tim Elliott most, mostly for this camp. He's such a weirdo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's so weird to the point where it's such a great look for me. And, like, getting in there with guys like that to test me, guys at the level that I'm at, I don't feel like they'll be at the level that I'm training at. So Okay, fair enough. How has it been with Robert Falls leaving the gym? I know he sort of just uh, – I know he's, I think he's parted ways with the gym. How has that affected you at all? Uh, not not really much because he's been my tra- he's been my main training partner there. Because I work with him and I work with Dewey Cooper out of uh, One Kicks Gym. So Dewey does all of my striking and I do all of my grappling with uh, Robert Fallis. So it didn't really bother me moving because literally is literally everybody under the weight class of 155 moved with him over to UFC PI. So we have a great team over there. Like We got all the little guys that you can think of, like me, Tim Elliott, Mark Dickman, uh, Gustavo Lopez, and like, like, like stack cars. Like we got Joseph Benavidez coming back after his injury. So like we got a stack room, so I can't really complain. But still home. I was going to say, I know you worked a little bit with uh, Brian Caraway. I just talked to him this afternoon. I know he's another guy who's getting ready for a fight coming up here on that Fresno card. Fight the fights. Yeah. <laughs> like we're all back to back to back. It's crazy. Yeah, it's good. Uh, you have a lot of guys coming up. What about uh, your brother, Kevin? Is is he uh, working with you guys at all uh, You know, after his fight? Uh, he's traveling right now. He's soaking up his fruits, which he needs to do. 
He's enjoying himself. Like, he put on a fucking hell of a performance, one of the best performances I've seen from him. And, like, he deserves everything that he has coming to him, and he's out relaxing, enjoying himself. And I couldn't wish nothing for him. Is he going to come out for your fight in this one? Oh, yeah, of course. He's I was going to say, yeah, because yeah, I was going to say. He can fight without him. He's always there. Who, who else is going to be in your corner for this fight? Um, right now, we're looking at me and Dewey Cooper. But Kevin and Dewey Cooper. Uh, I was looking at Rob Fallis, but Fallis, like I said, we have so many people fighting back to back to back. So he'll probably have a guy fighting. But it's, if it's not Rob, it's Dewey. So that's the only two guys that I have. For. How's the how's the weight cut going? We got a, we got lots of time before this fight, but I know you're a little bit under the weather, and I know that makes it a little bit more difficult to, to cut weight and all that. At 35, I don't really have a weight cut. <laughs> I'm a big boy, but the weight comes off me pretty easily until I get to about 130. When I get to 130, that's where my body's like, all right, you need to stop whatever you're doing. <laughs> so as long as we don't, as I, as long as I can stay under the 35, I'm cool. Like that last weight cut, like I think I did two baths. I literally sat there and relaxed, was talking to people, having fun. Got on weight, and I didn't even realize I was on weight until the actual weigh-ins. And I was smiling, laughing, having fun. It wasn't even a weight cut. I think I came in at 144, 145 the day before. Cut 10 pounds, and I was solid. Nice. How's this fight ending on December 9th? You're going to win, otherwise you wouldn't have taken the fight. But how do you sort of see it unfolding? Uh, I see it being a great fight, as always. Like I'm not one of those guys that be like, I'm going to knock him out in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. so, and none of that. Like, I Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that I'm going to go out there and put on the best performance I can put on. And hopefully he comes to show. If he shows up, then I'm telling you, it's going to be fireworks. Just like the last couple of them that I had. Trying to win up any Canadian fans, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you, you mentioned a bit there, you know, you're disappointed you didn't get the title shot. What is next for you? You said, you know, a couple more fights. And then when you said Big Show, are you talking UFC? Or what, what are you talking about sort of game plan in the future? Uh, we, we're looking at the UFC level. I feel like I'm, t- I'm two away. I'm two and one right now. Should have been three and oh, but you know how that, how that works, how... Canadian judges work, <laughs> but like I said, by by time four and one comes or five and one comes, pretty sure we'll be at the UFC level. Like I said, I'm on my way to the top, and I don't think there's a lot of people that can stop me. Well, and, and you're fighting for TKO as well, and, and you're on Fight Pass, so it's like you're getting that good exposure anyways. Like, I feel like you're in a really good spot right now, especially to get to the UFC from there. It's a perfect feeder league, and we're just going to keep egging them while we can, you know? And they're just going to keep throwing me opponents, and, and the thing about it is they're throwing me good guys, like. I don't think I've had one easy fight yet. Like they've been throwing me good guys, and I'm fucking only twenty. I just turned twenty-one last month, so I'm going faster than most guys, and they throwing me actual killers. And I'm just going to prove that I'm the the doggest of the dogs, you know. What uh, What are you watching on TV right now, or Netflix, or anything like that? Are you getting any TV time in at all? Actually, I just tried to start the fucking the American Horror Story season. I actually just tried to start it yesterday. It's so weird. It's way weirder than the other seasons. I don't know what I don't know what the fuck is going on with it. Honestly, like I think. I started the uh, the cult one and the Romanoke, or however, however the fuck you say yeah. it. Yeah, R- Renoki or something. I, for, I forget how it's said. But yeah, every every season's a different theme, isn't it? So weird. Like, I love American Horror Story. Like, uh, I've watched all the seasons except for two that just came out. And like I said, I've been sick and laying in a house. So I was like, I might as well start something. It's, it's, too, it's a little too weird for me, though. I am not you up. <laughs> These last seasons are really, really awkward. But I've just been thinking about getting back in the cage, honestly, man. Just getting back in the gym, getting back in the cage. Like I said, Fred is a good fighter. He he had a big left hook on him for that Tyler Wilson fight. But what I wasn't really impressed with is that he stood up with Tyler Wilson. Tyler Wilson can't punch his way out of a fucking plastic bag. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And he was he was catching punches. He was trading shots with the kid. And I was actually supposed to fight Tyler Wilson. And I'm not one of those guys that will, like I said before, I'm not one of those guys that will predict a first-round knockout. But if I would have fought Tyler Wilson, it would have been a one-minute knockout. Because Tyler Wilson can't punch his way out of a bag. Everyone's got to check out this fight. It's uh, TKO41 coming up here December 9th. Uh, Keith, I always appreciate you taking the time, man. Just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you've got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. Actually, I want sponsors. I don't have any <laughs> sponsors right now. Like, I don't have a manager. I'm looking for a manager at the moment. Like, I was with Stefan Pat- Patry, uh, the owner of TKO. But we really haven't uh, signed anything in, in paper. But I'm just looking for a manager, looking for sponsors. Anybody wants to hit me up, I'm a young, handsome black guy that wins fights. So... I don't think you can get any better than that. You can reach me on Instagram at Keith underscore Lee 125.